Welcome back to Barbless Creations. I'm Ron, and today we're going to review a fun little electronics project I worked on with my cousin's son, Mason. Mason, who turned 7 the day this video comes out, Happy Birthday, Mason! has increasingly shown signs of intellectual curiosity over the past few years, and my cousin and her husband do a great job of encouraging that in him, and I definitely want to as well. A few of the things Mason has shown interest in over the past few years is a few of the things I was also interested in as a kid. Craft type projects, basically anything with a hot glue gun, and electricity. Since I was obsessed with that stuff too, I knew just the type of project I could work on with him the next time we made the 4 hour trip back to my hometown. The project is called a quiz board, and I found it in an electronics book for kids back when I was in the 6th grade. The concept is pretty simple, but a little hard to explain, so I'll do my best as we jump in here. You start with a flat, thin board and mount metallic contacts on the left and right sides of the board and connect them together randomly on the back. Using a simple light bulb and battery pack circuit, the two sides of the board essentially become a question and answer side. When you get an answer correct by touching two pins to the corresponding question and answer, the circuit is completed via the wires on the back and the bulb lights up. It's not magic, it's science. Before heading back to my hometown to work on this with him, I decided to laser etch the marker board we would be using to make it a little more personal, and to do that, I first had to come up with a design. I started by creating an artboard and illustrator the same width and height as my marker board, and then started adding a little title and description to the board. This evolved quite a bit as the design progressed, and I was never really quite happy with the title until I was nearly done when the perfect title popped into my head. You'll see that towards the end. After the title, I laid out numbers and letters on opposing sides of the board to serve as the questions and answers for the quiz aspect. I didn't realize it until I was completely done lasering the board, but I completely forgot to cut holes for the bolts we would use as terminals, so I had to very carefully drill and space those with a hand drill once I got back from the makerspace. The last step was designing a little area for the light bulb to go. I sized the hole to correspond with the size of some mini bulbs I bought on Amazon for this project. And finally, just in the nick of time before lasering, the perfect title for the board came to me. Then it was time for everyone's favorite part, the laser cutting itself. I broke my file into a few separate raster jobs to save the laser time by not having to travel over a lot of open space. Had I done all these at once, the laser would have had to travel that large gap of white between the questions and answer side for every single horizontal pass back and forth, resulting in a longer etching time. After etching the marker board, a wet paper towel was all that was needed to clean up all the residue left from etching. So, with the design process out of the way, let me introduce you to Mason the Mastermind. So, say hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm here with my cousin Mason, and I'm about to show him, I don't know if I'm even going to show him, the uh, magic of electricity. So, you know this is a light bulb, right? Um, this is a battery pack, you know, your batteries, because you apparently sell batteries out of remote controls and stuff, <laughs> according to mom. That's because I'm taking the wire out. So this is what's called a circuit. The, the power flows out of these two wires and into these two wires, and the wet bulb comes on. So if you do this, they come on. Right? Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So what I thought we could make was, um, this is a little project I did when I was a kid. I called it a quiz board. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the bulb right here, and then we're going to put some screws on this side. And on the back, we're going to put wires all over the place that will connect the circuit. And then you can write questions and answers and go quiz mommy and daddy. And, and see if they get the answers right. And then they'll, they'll, they'll take their wire and connect it and see if they got it right. It'll make more sense in a bit, I promise. So we need your hot glue gun. Do you have your hot glue gun? <laughs> <laughs> While we waited for Mason's hot glue gun to heat up, we started stripping a few of the wires we would use for the back of the board. As a side note, we ended up recording a lot of footage for this project since I wanted to be sure to explain things to Mason as we went along. So I'll be doing a bit of a time lapse of the project as a whole and explain what we're doing for you as well. Once Mason's hot glue gun was heated up, we used it to glue the mini light bulb holder to the back of the board. Next, we put all the flathead screws and nuts together through the board and left these slightly loose so that we could come back and wrap the wire around the screw threads before tightening the bolts down. For the wires, we would cut a random length of wire and then I'd have Mason pick which two terminals the wire would terminate at. 
Tightening the wires down ended up being a slightly tedious part of the project because the screws I ended up selecting at the hardware store were tough to tighten by hand, so I had to use the pliers tip of the wire strippers as a wrench and then a flathead screwdriver to tighten each one. Balancing the board while doing this was a little awkward. At this point in the project, we had to call it quits for the day. The next day came around and we resumed the project by gluing the battery pack down on the back of the board. Mason likes being extra generous with the hot glue, but the good news is that battery pack isn't going anywhere anytime soon. After that, we cut longer wires to serve as the terminal wires for the quiz taker to use while trying their luck at the questions and answers. We attached nails to the end of these wires by wrapping the wire around that very end of the nail and then taping it in place with electrical tape. This way, there was something more to hold on to when connecting the questions to the answers. One of my very favorite parts of doing this project with Mason was him, without any prompting from me, occasionally trying to guess the next step as we went along, which told me that he was not only interested in what we were doing, but that it was all making sense to him, even if I hadn't explained everything yet. Oh, I, I think I get it. These yep. two wires are going to be hooked into those. Yep. You got it. So smart. He is. He knew more than what Mom did. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> After our final wire connections were made, we needed to make an answer key based on how the wires were connected on the back. That way, when creating a quiz, we would know exactly which number on the left needed to be with which letter on the right. This involved looking on the back to see where the wires were hooked up and then verifying it by connecting the probes. With all the wire stripping, gluing, and connecting of the wires complete, we could finally craft our first quiz. Mason is a big fan of something else I was obsessed with as a kid, the solar system. So we made his first quiz, planets, and other bodies in the solar system. After testing it ourselves to make sure we had everything labeled correctly, we had his mom, my cousin Lisa, take the quiz. Unfortunately, Mason has already quizzed Lisa about the solar system verbally over the past few years, so she knew most of the answers already. But we were still able to trick her on a few, and Mason was really excited when she got one wrong. I told him not to fret, though, that she got so many right, because it clearly meant he was a good teacher. When all was said and done, and after we had gotten a picture of him with our completed build, I had one more surprise in store for Mason. I had found a kit on Amazon that had all sorts of DC motors, propellers, gears, wheels, and the like for him to experiment with and make his own projects. I saved giving this to him for the very end so that he didn't lose interest in our project before it was done, because let's face it, I probably would have too in his position. Well, that's it for this one, folks. I know this was a little bit of a different one, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you have a little one in your life who's excited to learn more about science and electricity, this is a fun one to do with them to help encourage them to stay curious. We gotta nurture the heck out of that. If you like this video, Mason and I would sure appreciate if you hit the thumbs up and gave us a like. And if you wanna see more laser focused craft and woodworking videos from me in the future, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified of my future videos when they come out. I'll see you in the next one, but until next time, stay curious.